Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Fire Situation Report for Monday, August 1st, 2016. I'm Lynn Tolmachoff coming to you live from the Fire Information Center, filling in for Daniel Berlant, who will be back next week. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Last week, we saw over 300 new wildfires. It was a really busy weekend, really hot temperatures last week, so we saw quite a spike in activity. Today, we've burned over 223,000 acres across the state of California. And several of the new wildfires that are going, um, that got going over the weekend have actually been contained. Firefighters did some excellent work out there, did a great job containing most of them. We do still have two large fires in California burning today. Firefighters are working on gaining the upper hand, so hopefully this week things will work out better for them. Let's go ahead and get started here. Here's some uh, video from the Sobranes fire in Monterey County. As you can see, uh, some burning at nighttime, burning very actively, which is something they have seen a lot of on this fire, making this a very difficult firefight. But firefighters are out there. They're doing their best, and hopefully this week will, uh, will work for them. Let's go ahead and get started here with the fires. We'll talk about the Goose Fire here in Fresno County. This started just the other day, quickly grew to about 1,800 acres as of this morning. Now, as you take a look here, let me pull in a little bit closer. We have the community of Prather up here, Aubrey over here in Toll House. Now, this fire is in an area of what's known the type of vegetation there is oak woodland, but you get up this hill right here, we're getting into what's known as our tree mortality area. We, we see a lot of the dead pines up there from the bark beetle uh, epidemic and also drought stressed trees. So it's very important these firefighters have been able to keep this fire down on the lower levels, down the lower elevations, so they're getting a handle on it. Like I said, 1,800 acres and about 15% contained right now today. Uh, weather is uh, supposed to improve, so that should help them out. So let's go ahead and back out here. We'll move on to the Sobranes fire that we were looking at that video of earlier. We do have a time lapse map. Let me open that up. There we go. So this map, as you'll see, the growth of this fire. It, it spread pretty rapidly. You can see the area that it's in here. You can see the community of Big Sur down here, Carmel Valley over here, Carmel by the Sea. Very beautiful terrain. People flock to this area um, just to be able to see it. And it's absolutely beautiful here along. You've got the Pacific Coast Highway that runs along here. But these mountains right here, very, very steep, very rugged terrain. Uh, it's where we uh, have very difficult access getting into, which helps with the, the fire's rapid growth. Today, we're sitting at uh, about 40,618 acres. They do have 18% containment on it. And last night's fire activity was a little bit lower, which was a good sign. They're hopefully going to get some better weather conditions. May help them get a better hand on this fire. So once again... About 40,000 acres, and uh, unfortunately, we also have 57 homes that have been destroyed, and some of that uh, inspection is still going on, um, but firefighters are working their best. We still do have about 2,000 structures that are threatened, and we have some people that are still evacuated, but once again, firefighters are going to do their best to get people back home. So let's move on to the weather for the week. So here's Monday's high temperatures. Compared to last week, we're doing so much better. Today in Sacramento, we're expecting 93 degrees. Fresno, 102. San Diego, LA, down in the 80s. So this is uh, good weather conditions. This, like I said, will help these firefighters with their efforts to get these fires contained. By Friday, even better, 87 in Sacramento, 77 in LA, 81 in San Diego. Fresno finally drops out of the triple digits. So much, much better weather conditions for the week. And then as far as the humidity goes, this doesn't change a whole lot, but it is, definitely does improve. Sacramento, 24%. San Diego, 53%. LA, 54 Fresno still staying pretty dry. And then if you look at this part of the map here, this is where the Sobranes fire is. Now you can see they remained with having very, very low humidity in that area. That does make it a little bit more difficult for the firefighters, but the cooler weather should help. And then we'll go on here to the, the winds forecast just for the next 48 hours here. Um, pretty moderate throughout the state. The normal areas are going to see the wind gusts through the desert and the high desert up in the northern part of the state. So pretty average, uh, nothing uh, too bad, but still just winds. Is, it's another thing that helps spread wildfires, so be careful in those areas. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our message here for the week. Talk about animal evacuations. Let's see if we get the right video open here. Here we go. All right. 
So don't forget about your animals when it's time to evacuate. You gotta have a plan for you and your animals. You have gotta have something for your four-legged animals for sure, like here, the horse here trying to get him in the trailer and get him out. That's one of the most difficult things to do. Uh, on the sand fire when they're trying to help some folks ev evacuate the horses, the horses didn't know how to load into a trailer. Well, that's something you need to practice with your animals because when you've gotta move, they need to cooperate. So make sure you practice those sort of things. Also make sure you have extra food and water for them in their emergency supply kit. Don't run out. Don't get low on, on feed or that sort of thing. Make sure you have plenty with you to be able to take with you, too. And for your smaller animals, your dogs, your cats, something like that, make sure you have a carrier for them, some form of a carrier, whether um, it's you know a big plastic one or a cage or something along those lines, something that you can take with you when you take them to the animal shelter uh, to keep them safe and uh, out of harm's way. And the other thing, if you must leave your larger animals at home, Write a, your phone number on there somehow with a horse. Write it on the heel, uh, on their hoof with a uh, with a Sharpie marker or something like that. They also make some types of paint that you can just paint on their, um, their hind end or something like that. Just a phone number so they have a contact in case you have to leave. Animal control can go in there sometimes and get them and get them out, but they want to know who the owner is and you, know, you don't want to get your animals lost. So make sure you do that. And remember, your safety comes first. I know we all love our animals. I would hate to have to ever leave mine behind also, but your life is important and only evacuate your animals if you have time. Now, to learn more about this, visit our course, visit our website at readyforwildfire.org. has lots of great ideas and it'll give you some tips on how to do this. So we'll go ahead and in today's segment. On a somber note, earlier this week on the Sobranus fire, Robert Reagan lost his life in a bulldozer accident. Um, we'd like to ask that you join us in keeping Robert and his family, his daughters, in your thoughts and prayers, and along with our firefighter community as everybody starts to heal. Thank you for joining us this week. Have a fire safe week.